Live from London, you're watching BBC News. Finland will officially become a member of NATO on Tuesday. The move is seen as a major strategic setback for Vladimir Putin. The moments before a pro-war blogger was killed in an explosion in St. Petersburg, a 26-year-old woman has been detained by the Russian authorities. Donald Trump is set to fly from Florida to New York to face charges related to alleged hush money payments to a porn star. We'll be live in Florida and also live in New York. And teachers in England plan more strikes after the country's biggest education union rejects a pay offer from the government. Hello and welcome to BBC News and we start with that major breaking news of the past few hours. News that Finland's bid to join NATO is about to become a reality. NATO's Secretary General said the country will officially become a member of the military alliance on Tuesday. It's been fast-tracked because of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Well here's Jens Stoltenberg making that announcement in Brussels. Now, more teacher strikes in England have been announced while President Macron is meeting union leaders in France after weeks of protests over the change in pension aids. Those stories, uh, more on both of them here in a moment on BBC News. In the world of business, everything is connected. From global hubs to places less travelled. The big stories to your bottom line. The path can be unpredictable. But with the right insights, you can see where the bend in the road will lead. Business on BBC News. Make the connection. You're live with BBC News, an outer story that is getting so much interest around the world because Twitter has started removing verification badges from accounts which had a blue tick after announcing that users would need to pay $8 a month to keep their blue badge status. Uh, have a look at this because it's the Twitter account of the New York Times. It used to have a blue tick, but it was removed after the US newspaper said it would not pay to remain verified. Well, it well, there are concerns it will lead to more disinformation and falsehoods being shared. Uh, so well done for being so brief. Uh, we're going to take a break. Uh, more on all of those headline stories here on BBC News in just a moment or two. Don't go away. Live from London, this is BBC News. Finland will officially become a member of NATO on Tuesday. The move is seen as a major strategic setback for Vladimir Putin. The moments before a pro-war blogger was killed in an explosion in St. Petersburg, a 26-year-old woman has been detained by the Russian authorities. This is the scene live. Donald Trump is set to fly from Florida to New York to face charges related to alleged hush money payments to a porn star. And teachers in England plan more strikes after the country's biggest education union rejects a pay offer from the government. Well, we'll have uh, more on all of those headline stories here in a moment. First, though, sport, and let's get a roundup from the BBC Sports Centre. And uh, Will is here uh, for us. And, Will, we have two Premier League clubs looking for a new manager. Any names in the frame? It's all go, Matthew. Yeah, there are names in the frame. Luis Enrique and Julian Nagelsmann are actually two names that have been mentioned as potential successors to Graham Potter, who was sacked as Chelsea manager after less than seven months in charge. Matthew, that's all the sport. More for you later. 
Well, thanks very much. Well, let's uh, begin this uh, half hour with a story that has echoes of the Alex Jones defamation case in the US after the Sandy Hook school shootings. Well, survivors of the Manchester Arena bombing here in the UK have today filed a landmark legal action against a conspiracy theorist who claims the attack uh, was faked. Martin Hibbert and his daughter Eve were left with severe disabilities. They're suing Richard D. Hall for defamation and harassment. Paul Moss, we'll leave it there, but uh, thanks very much. Now, uh, let me take you back uh, to those uh, pictures, the sentencing I was showing you only a short while ago from uh, the Crown Court uh, in Manchester. The judge just beginning uh, to uh, pass sentence and in the last few minutes has said uh, for the murder of Olivia, there is only one sentence that can be passed. That is of a mandatory life imprisonment. However, for reasons I must explain, this is not a case which must attract a whole life order. But uh, making the point there really early on that uh, there will be a mandatory life imprisonment uh, sentence. So uh, uh, those are the early parts of that sentencing. We'll return to the court for more here on the programme in the next little while. Well, around the world and across the UK, you are watching BBC News. you experienced racism, why didn't you walk away? That's a really good question. You're a politician. I'm not, you read I'm the not polls. a politician. I don't read the polls. Yeah, you I are sit a in politician. judiciary committee. No, you are, you are I very do, definitely a politician. No, no, no. The very fact that there were not people I'm who getting, looked like you... The, in, hold on. I'm only halfway through my answer. Is secret schooling happening across Afghanistan for girls? It does. You simply actually, can't assume that. Actually, yes, you can. Hard Talk on BBC News. I think we can use a form of capitalism and continue to get its benefits while solving climate change. We should remember that the globalization we had before brought more than one billion people out of poverty. I always associated fashion with fun and joy. Women ourselves are finding our power. We always had a voice. We just weren't allowed to use it. When big names talk, they talk to the BBC. You're live with BBC News. Now, to more strikes in the UK and efforts to avert more protests in France. Well, let's start here in England because schools face walkouts this spring. More walkouts after members of the National Education Union rejected the government's pay offer. Teachers have been gathering for the union's annual conference in Harrogate, where pay and workload are among the issues being discussed. Now, government ministers say the offer was reasonable. Well, let's hear from our UK education editor, Bramwin Jeffries. Thank you. That, that completes my sentencing remarks uh, and it completes the sentencing hearing. Well, that was Mrs Justice Yip uh, giving Cashman uh, 42 years, a uh, life imprisonment with a minimum of 42 years uh, for the murder of Olivia pratt uh, Corbell. He wasn't actually in the court. He refused to leave the cells. We'll have more on that and the rest of our headline stories here in just a moment. Live from London, this is BBC News. Finland will officially become a member of NATO on Tuesday. It'll be, I'll be joined by the US ambassador to NATO to look at what this means for the military alliance. The moments before a pro-war blogger was killed in an explosion in St. Petersburg, a 26-year-old woman has been detained by Russian authorities. Donald Trump is set to fly from Florida to New York to face charges related to alleged hush money payments to a porn star. And the man who shot nine-year-old Olivia pratt Corbell in her home in Liverpool is given a life sentence for her murder with a minimum of 42 years.
Hello and welcome to BBC News. And we start with that major story of the past few hours. News that Finland's bid to join NATO is about to become a reality. NATO's Secretary General said the country will officially become a member of the military alliance on Tuesday. It's been fast-tracked because of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Well, here's Jens Stoltenberg making that announcement from Brussels. Ambassador, thank you very much for taking time to speak to us here on BBC News. We're grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Well, around the world and across the UK, you are watching BBC News. We left everything behind every headline. There is a human story. This is our world. The living culture. A series of documentary films that reveal the human drama at the heart of global events. Our world on BBC News. You're live with uh, BBC News and let's return straight away to that breaking news we brought you in the last uh, 20 minutes or so that the killer of a nine-year-old girl in Liverpool has been jailed today for 42 years for her murder. Thomas Cashman, who's 34, was found guilty last week of shooting dead the girl at her family home during a chase with a convicted drug dealer. Well, his lawyer told Manchester Crown Court that Cashman was refusing to come to the dock for sentencing, claiming the prosecutor sang we are the champions when he was convicted last week. Well, uh, let's just show you the moment that Cashman was actually sentenced. That's largely because the process is manual, so it will take quite some time to go through and remove all of those ticks. Courtney, thanks for taking us through all of that. We'll have more on all of our main stories. We'll also have the business news of the day. All of that here in just a moment or two. Live from London, this is BBC News. Finland will officially become a member of NATO on Tuesday. The move is seen as a major strategic setback for Vladimir Putin. The moments before a pro-war blogger was killed in an explosion in St. Petersburg, a 26-year-old woman has been detained by the Russian authorities. Donald Trump is set to fly from Florida to New York in the next half an hour to face charges related to alleged hush money payments to a porn star. And the man who shot nine-year-old Olivia Pratt Corbell in her own home in Liverpool is given a life sentence for her murder with a minimum of 42 years. Welcome back. We'll have the latest on all of those stories. We're keeping an eye on those pictures coming in to us uh, from Florida. All of that here in a moment or two. But let's head and catch up with a roundup of all the sports news. Let's go to our BBC Sports Centre and back to Will Perry. Well, over to you. Hello again, Matthew. Yeah, Chelsea's interim head coach Bruno Saltor says it's been a difficult 24 hours for everyone at the club after Graham Potter was sacked on Sunday after less than seven months in charge. Matthew, that's all the sport for now. We'll have more for you later. Well, thanks very much. Now, let's turn to Afghanistan because the Taliban have been in power for over 18 months now. And although income from Poppy helped fund their insurgency, they're now trying to get a grip of the drug problem in Kabul. Thousands of addicts have been rounded up from the streets, forced into rehab to give them time to dry out. But although the Taliban government has imposed a complete ban on Poppy production, the UN says opium cultivation increased by 32% in 2022. Yada Hakim reports now from Kabul on the difficult journey. We've got uh, business coming up here in the next couple of minutes around the world and across the UK or watching BBC News. Now showing on BBC Real. Privuklo odmah našu pažnju su malene kašičice izrađene od kosti kojih ima 
kroz čitav neolitski svet na hiljade i hiljade. Zapravo smo pokazali da su tragovi na kašičicama zapravo tragovi mlečnih zuba. Za nas je to bilo izuzetno otkriće, ne samo zbog toga što smo pokazali da je ovaj predmet upotrebljavan u ishrani beba. Neolitske mame po prvi put u evoluciji čovečanstva mogli da imaju više dece nego bilo koja prethodna majka u prahistoriji. Watch more stories like this at bbc.com slash real. You're live with BBC News. It is business time here. Ben Thompson is with me. And Ben, what do you have for us? Yeah, we're talking oil, Matthew. Thanks very much. Uh, yes, lots of movements there. Oil prices have been surging today after the world's largest exporters announced surprise cuts in production. Saudi Arabia and other OPEC plus oil producers say that they will cut output by 1.2 uh, million barrels a day. Saudi Arabia said that the move was aimed at stabilizing the market, as it said. So let's show you what's happening as far as oil is concerned. And it's, uh, as we set up, about 5% so far on the day, uh, actually 6% higher. Um, it is the second time that the cartel has slashed production. The group did so in October of last year. You can see taking Brent crude to just shy of $85 a barrel. Uh, last year, it cut output by 2 million barrels a day. A little earlier, I spoke to David Shepard, who is the energy editor at the Financial Times in London, he told me why OPEC Plus are making these cuts. Some other business stories for you at this hour. The struggling cinema chain Cineworld has said it will raise new funding as it dropped plans to sell its businesses in the US, UK and Ireland. That's after failing to find a buyer. The company saw its share price fall by nearly 30% after announcing it would terminate the move. At the same time, Cineworld said it had struck a deal with its lenders to restructure its substantial debt and exit bankruptcy. The company behind the UFC Mixed Martial Arts franchise has agreed to buy the World Wrestling Entertainment, or WWE. The deal unites two of the biggest names in wrestling and sport, creating a new publicly listed entertainment giant, one that is valued at around $21 billion. Also today, it is 50 years since the now ubiquitous barcode was invented. Today, the rectangular patch of thin and wider vertical lines appears on every kind of product in shops around the world, with the distinctive beep sounding around 6 billion times a day as consumers scan their purchases. The device was invented by a man called Norman Joseph Woodland, who traced a prototype barcode in the sand on a Florida beach. So two big birthdays today, Matthew. The barcode and the mobile phone. The first call on a mobile phone. How they have changed the you world. Know, I remember they used to send me out with this enormous great thing. And uh, You had a good excuse of not being contactable, though, if the battery <laughs> ran out after about 20 minutes. It so. was almost as big as me. Ben, thanks very much. Thank you. Now, I'm going to take you uh, straight back uh, to Florida, Mar-a-Lago, and show you the uh, live pictures because we've been anticipating uh, the movement of the former president, uh, Donald Trump, uh, from Florida to New York, uh, where, of course, uh, he will face uh, tomorrow those charges. Uh, the first time ever a former president has faced criminal prosecution. Uh, these are the pictures uh, as uh, the vehicle already to uh, just take him that short distance from Mar-a-Lago to the airport. We've seen the pictures over the last uh, couple of hours of uh, the jet on the tarmac and uh, of course uh, we will learn for the first time what is actually in the indictment tomorrow. Uh, uh, media reports say that Donald Trump will face more than 30 charges related to business fraud over that and uh, head to New York. Uh, as I say, uh, the plan is that he arrives there in New York, heads to, to Trump Tower right there on Fifth Avenue, and then uh, prepare himself with his legal team for tomorrow's events. But uh, of course, we haven't got the exact timings. We've seen uh, security uh, much enhanced around those uh, court buildings in Lower Manhattan. Of course, uh, the Secret Service involved in transporting a former president from one location to another. So uh, no surprise about the heavy security, but it'll be the scenes in court, the scenes we actually see on camera of the former president. And of course, the actual details of what is included in that indictment. I was listening to one legal expert saying they anticipated much more 
before in terms of what we'd actually learn, why we've actually got to this uh, point which has been seen uh, everywhere in legal circles as a major precedent. You are watching BBC News. Well, live from London, this is BBC News. Donald Trump is set to leave his home in Florida to fly to New York to face charges related to alleged hush money payments to a porn star. The man who shot nine-year-old Olivia pratt Corbell in her own home at Liverpool is given a life sentence for a murder with a minimum of 42 years. Finland will officially become a member of NATO on Tuesday. The move is seen as a major strategic setback for Vladimir Putin. And the moments before a pro-war blogger was killed in an explosion in St. Petersburg, a 26-year-old woman has been detained by the Russian authorities. Well, welcome to uh, BBC News. Uh, let's return to uh, those events in Florida, Mar-a-Lago, because uh, we've been showing you the pictures for the last little while at Mar-a-Lago, seen uh, Donald Trump's home, the gate open, because uh, we are expecting in the next few moments, if we are uh, following uh, the time schedule laid out by the former president, uh, to see Donald Trump uh, leave that building and head to the airport uh, and then begin the journey to New York. And uh, that is where, of course, all the focus is going to be uh, with that indictment, those court proceedings. Uh, the first time ever a former president has faced a criminal prosecution and uh, those details of that criminal prosecution, well, they will be made public tomorrow. We know of the indictment but in terms of the actual charges, the detail, we will learn a lot more as that is laid out in court tomorrow. But uh, that is tomorrow. Today we'll see the former president uh, make that move. There is still no actual clarity of uh, perhaps what we will get tomorrow, the optics, uh, whether we get a mugshot of uh, the former president, uh, whether that uh, the cameras are allowed in the courtroom for the list of charges, uh, and uh, a lot of those things, uh, the judge himself, have, uh, who, uh, the uh, media have made requests for cameras. He will make a decision on that at some stage tomorrow. But uh, we are keeping an eye on those pictures. We will return just as soon as there any movement there in Florida and bring you the very latest. When there's movement, we'll return there to Florida. Around the world and across the UK, you are watching BBC News. Lift everything. Behind every headline, there is a human story. This is our world. The living culture. A series of documentary films that reveal the human drama at the heart of global events. Our world on BBC News. That's why I say. You're live with BBC News. Let's turn now to another major story. News that Finland's bid to join NATO is about to become a reality. NATO Secretary General said the country will officially become a member of the military alliance on Tuesday. It's been fast tracked because of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Well, here's Jan Stoltenberg making that announcement in Brussels. Gary, I'm pausing only because I have half an eye on the Trump jet, which uh, looks like it's uh, making its final manoeuvres before the actual takeoff. And uh, you mentioned there in uh, your answer that, of course, uh, this setting a precedent for a former president uh, facing criminal charges. But of course, the backdrop is he wants to be the next American president and how all of this impacts that political run but that uh, is months away as we see the jet begin to take off tomorrow will be all about what happens in the courtroom in new york 
back. Uh, I'm coming to the end of uh, my programme as you watch the jet take off. A pointer to viewers here in the UK. They will have the six o'clock news with Rita Chakrabarti in a moment or two. But uh, we will also continue uh, this coverage uh, with Yada Hakim taking us through those events, uh, both in Florida and as Donald Trump heads to New York. Thanks for watching. See you next time.